Hi, I'm Glenn. I'll be your coach for your Art 490 career and portfolio journey this semester. Uh, we're going to start with kind of a big thing. Uh, what's your career goal? Uh, it's funny that I'm calling that a big question since, of course, it's a question that people have probably been asking since you were a kid, right? When, when I was a kid, I think the answer to what do you want to be when you grow up was fireman. And uh, obviously today, the answer to, at least here in the global north, the answer to what do you want to be when you grow up, I, I think most commonly is influencer. So, you know, we've been asking that question and giving answers like fireman or influencer or whatever else for our whole lives. But now you're getting ready to graduate from the School of Art and suddenly this question is becoming kind of serious. So I definitely don't want to make it too heavy, but um, it's kind of important. So let me break down. I obviously have not met you yet. We haven't started yet, but based on the, I guess, seven years that I've been teaching this workshop now, um, this is what's very common and may well apply to us this semester as well. Um, a few people are gonna already know with great clarity what the career goal is. I'm gonna be an animator, done, let's go. And also there will be one or two people in the class who have already decided I'm gonna finish my art degree and then I'm gonna pursue a non-art career. I'm gonna be a biology teacher, a firefighter, or you know anything else on earth. Um, great. Uh, but an awful lot of us, more than half almost certainly, are going to want an art career, but we're not really going to be sure what that's going to be. Um, I'd like to teach some fiber art workshops, but I'd also like to get a graphic design career going. But I'd also like to show my ceramics work in a gallery. And I heard about this internship at the Broad to learn to be a museum preparator. I'd like to do that. Well, those and many others are, are you know, those are four or a, a, an infinite number of, of great choices out there. But I think if you're trying to pursue four things or three things or even just two things, you really decrease the chances that you're going to have an art career at all. We always talk, uh, we always use phrases like keep your eye on the ball. Well, if there's four balls in the air or even two balls in the air, you can't really keep your eye on the ball. You're more like a deer in the headlights. Um, if you're willing to pick one, you really can focus. When you meet someone at a networking event, instead of rambling forever about I do this and I do that, you can tell them exactly what you do. And even more important than communicating to others is for yourself to have a laser focus. You don't get up in the morning and say, should I send my portfolio to animation studios? Or should I send my work to uh, an art gallery? Or should I try to rustle up some graphic design clients? You don't have that confusion. You know every day, this is the career I'm trying to pursue. So really important to focus. It's worth keeping in mind that this is not like Sophie's choice. You're not giving up your children forever. All we're talking about is if you do have two or three or four things that you're interested in and, and you know, many of us have tried a lot of different art forms during our time in the School of Art. Um, and maybe we'd like to, you know, hang on to some of those. I'm not asking you to give them up forever. I'm asking you to pick one and put the others on a shelf. And we'll come back to them somewhere down the road, maybe five years from now. So instead of 2024, you know, maybe it's now it's, it's 2029. And maybe I decided that I, I thought the graphic design career was a, 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 an easier path or I could more clearly visualize actually paying rent and putting food on the table with a graphic design career. So I put the fiber art workshops on the shelf and now it's 2029. Let me take that down from the shelf and decide where do I want to go? And the answer could be anything. I might say, you know what? I, I'm really still passionate about that. I miss it and I really want, I think now 2029, or sooner or later, whatever. Uh, now is the time for me to come back and make these fiber art workshops happen. Or I might say, you know what? I'm really quite satisfied with my graphic design career and those fiber art workshops. I mean, yeah, they'd be cool, but it was kind of a romantic college self idea that I had. And now that it's 2029 and I'm out of college for some, from some years, 
and the graphic design career is going okay. I don't really have to do that. I'm gonna let that go. Um, the reality is that whether we're talking about careers or partners or activities or places around the world to live or all of the choices that we have in life, there are many more options, many more paths you could walk than you're ever gonna have time to walk in a single human lifetime. So we, we do make choices. Sometimes choice A you know, dictates some of our options or restricts our options for choice B. Again, I don't, I don't wanna to get too heavy, but it is, uh, you know, these are life choices and, and right now is a good time to make them. Um, we've been messing around with lots of things. Let's pick something. Um, as I mentioned, a few of you will already know I'm gonna be an animator done. A few, one or two of you might already know I'm not gonna pursue an art career. I'm gonna be a firefighter, or a biology teacher, or anything else under the sun. Most of us won't be sure. Um, typically in this class, it's, we've wound up with maybe three quarters people who are interested in pursuing commercial art careers, animation, illustration, photography, graphic design, UI, UX, et cetera, and maybe one quarter are interested in showing work in pursuing a gallery career to show your ceramics work, your painting work, and that might be focused on media like ceramics or painting or fiber art, or it might not be media focused, it might be conceptually focused that uh, I create works about identity or about you know uh, social realism or social justice or any number of topics, and so it's more about the concepts and that might manifest as painting or performance art or any number of things. Uh, and uh, we may also have uh, a few people interested in pursuing art education type careers and maybe a, a couple of us will be interested in art history type careers. So um, as you're sorting through this, and, and again, if, you, if you're toying between two or more different options and feeling stressed, what do I pick? The first important thing to know is you are not alone and it's not unusual or abnormal in any way. Most of us are in that boat. You know, we, we, we really haven't sorted that out yet, but now is a great time, again, to make a choice, not for the next 50 years, but, you know, for as much of the semester as we can. When you do, uh, by the end of week two, make one clear choice, uh, I'm, that's not a promise to Glenn that you're gonna do that for the next five years. That's just uh, a focus for yourself that you're gonna do that for as long as makes sense. If you wake up the next morning or the next week and you say, uh, no, I don't wanna do the graphic design thing, I really do wanna pursue the fiber art workshops right now, then make that change next, next day, next week, next month, next, decade, you know, whenever that happens. Um, and, and if you really do think you made the wrong choice and you want to switch, I would just switch immediately at that point. There's no point in, you know, slowly peeling the Band-Aid off or slowly getting in the cool water one inch at a time. Just dive in the pool and start swimming already. So change anytime you need to. It's, you know, this class I hope is 0% about you doing anything, jumping through any hoops to make Glenn happy. The only reason this class exists, the only reason I'm here is to help you pursue whatever career you want, which might be a commercial art career, a, a gallery art career, an art history career, uh, art history related career, an art education career, or any other non-art career like teaching biology, firefighter, and everything else. Let's make portfolios uh, and career plans that advance those careers. Um, once I convince you to narrow that down to one clear goal, then I'm going to ask you to pick three categories within that goal. So it's going to be something like uh, animator, and my three categories are uh, storyboards, character designs, backgrounds, or graphic designer, and my categories are branding, packaging, typography. So three things within whatever your goal is, and those will be our focus for building your portfolio. Um, it would be great to wind up with like six pieces for each category, six, six, six. Um, some of you will already have six, six, six. That will be very few of us, but one or two of us might. Uh, one or two of us might think that we have zero, 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 
which is possible, but it's more likely that you've got a few pieces hanging around that you could use that you didn't think of. And it's very common to wind up with like 630. So uh, I'm an animator and I've got uh, six character designs, awesome, but only three backgrounds and I don't actually have any storyboards. So the even numbered weeks we're doing things to build the portfolio like um, career goal, uh, viewer profile, write about yourself, write about your work, pick a platform, go ahead and put all those elements together on that platform to be your portfolio, the even numbered weeks. The odd numbered weeks is always make new work. So even if you're 630 or even if you're 000 or whatever, you know, wherever you may be, we've got a half a dozen or more chances, I think seven times uh, this semester, to make new work. So make pieces that build that portfolio. The new work that you make has to fit your portfolio. So if you said animator, um, character design, storyboards, backgrounds, and you're also taking a metals class this semester, you can't submit the cool new piece of jewelry you made in metals class. Not because it isn't awesome, but it just it does not advance your animation or user interface or uh, any other career. You can change, as I said, at any time if, if you rethink that choice, but whatever the active choice is on all the odd numbered weeks, make a piece for that. And so no matter how few pieces you have, if you're at 630, for example, you don't have any storyboards, then week three, week five, week seven, make a storyboard, make a storyboard, make a storyboard, and now we're already up to 633. We're in a pretty good shape for our portfolio. So um, that's kind of the mission for gallery artists and commercial artists. It will be make new work, you know, make more paintings, make more ceramic pieces, make more storyboards, make more user interfaces, etc. cetera. Um, as an art educator, you would show your art, that would be part of the portfolio, but it wouldn't be the focus. The focus should be lesson plans, pedagogical ideas, and so on. So if you've taken some art ed classes and you have some materials that you generated, we can use those, and let's make some. You know, a photo of you teaching a class is priceless to put us in the mindset that you are an educator. Um, sharing some lesson plans, really terrific. Uh, if, if you're leaving art, if you're going to be a biology teacher, it's kind of the same thing, right? Again, uh, lesson plans, pedagogical ideas, and so on. Um, if you're following an art history kind of track, uh, you might want to have scholarly papers. Uh, when we say make new work, it would be, you know, run around L.A., go to an art gallery, an art museum, and write a review of a new show. Um, so building up your credentials as... Uh, an art critic for magazines or uh, an art writer for maybe working at a museum or gallery uh, or nonprofit foundation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, as a publicist, communications person, media person, and so on. And, you know, if, you're, if you've decided to be a firefighter, then you might be talking about physical training, your own preparation for this career. And um, you might be writing pieces on fire safety tips to share with people. So wherever we are, uh, that's the portfolio that we want to build up. And let me say that it's, it's probably obvious that a, a gallery artist or a commercial artist would want a portfolio, but I think that for um, an art historian, an art educator, or anyone who's chosen not to pursue an art career, you know, for, for biology teachers and firefighters and everyone else, that a portfolio is still super valuable. So you're graduating from Long Beach State, really a terrific achievement. I absolutely want you to celebrate, uh, spend some time with family, with friends, have a big party, go off in nature by yourself, do all of that. Um, you have achieved something that almost nobody in history achieved and still around the United States and the world today, very few people, or not very few, but, uh, but a whole lots, of, but millions of people have not achieved that. So um, take the time to celebrate this amazing accomplishment. Give yourself a big pat on the back. And then at some point, you're going to turn that last page of this big chapter of your life and what's on the next page but the very first page of the next chapter. So for all you have achieved, 
now you're going to be entering a career marketplace where there are thousands of people who just got similar degrees to you and have similar qualifications. So I think a portfolio is a really great way to distinguish yourself, to show your abilities, to show your seriousness, your professionalism. And again, I think that applies not just for commercial artists and gallery artists, but for art historians, art educators, uh, biology teachers, firefighters, and everybody else. So that's kind of our plan uh, to get started. We, uh, so as I mentioned in the uh, Canvas announcements, you know, we have the, the faculty strike coming up week one. That might change at the last minute, we don't know, but nothing's gonna be due until the end of week two. At the end of week two will be that, uh, you know, career choice uh, activity. Um, so if the strike is averted at the last minute, then I'll see you at noon on Monday or Wednesday of week one on Zoom. And if the strike does go through, then I won't see you in week one, but I'll see you in week two on Monday or Wednesday at noon on Zoom. Um, shout if I can help. Uh, assuming there is a strike, I'll only be available on email through the end of this week zero before it starts and then in week two and when it's over. But you know, before, after, or if the strike should be averted, whenever that happens, let me know if I can help. Um, these are life choices that can be stressful, and the best way to deal with that stress is to talk about it. You know, let's talk uh, as a group in our brief 45-minute Monday-Wednesday sessions, or let's talk one-to-one -one on Zoom or by email or whatever. Um, but scary stuff talked through tends to be a lot less scary. So I hope this is a really productive semester where we impact, where we, <laughs> By we, I guess I mean you and I, and it's mostly you, empower yourself to build the career you want. Again, whether that's commercial art, gallery art, art history, art education, or any other non-art career. So I will see you soon. Good luck. I hope we have a great semester. I'm so excited about learning about your work and uh, moving toward your graduation and building that career beyond the Long Beach State campus. Good luck.